Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Dranda Cassie. And today, Gary's going to be sharing with you principles that will help you find favor in your finances. And that's a good thing because we lived nine years hand to mouth, in debt, no hope, until we found the Word of God addresses finances with all kinds of great promises that changed our life. Recently, we shared this principle with Faith Life Church. I want to invite you to join us during a session as we taught this principle, no deposit, no return. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Let's put our scripture up, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. One person gives freely yet gains even more. Think about what the Bible just said, kind of doesn't make sense in the natural. Another withholds unduly but comes to poverty. And here is our key scripture, a generous person, help me out, will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Please write somewhere in your Bible someplace, I am a generous uh, person, therefore I prosper. You are a generous person and you shall prosper. We have, uh, of course, in our congregation, countless stories of these laws actually working. But I want to show you a video of a family that's been here for quite a while and an amazing job telling the story. Let's take a look at Mike and Stacy's story. Back in the early 90s, I was actually in the bar business and uh, I was pretty rough around the edges. Uh, I'd obviously, I developed a drinking problem. Uh, I was very violent uh, because I was a bouncer. That's what my job was. And I did it obviously a lot of it for fun. It was a lifestyle that, you know, it looks fun on the outside, but deep down inside, I was really, really struggling and hurting, and I knew that. But the reason every morning I would wake up and I would continue to drink, to one, you know, combat the hangover I had from the night before, but alleviate the pain of not really having any focus, no direction. And that was just a vicious cycle that I was going in. And I remember actually thinking, is this all there is? You know, I actually had contemplated thoughts of suicide. Uh, it was that bad. And that's right when you met me. Absolutely. Perfect timing. Uh, actually, Stacy worked in the same club that I worked at uh, down in Dallas, Texas is where we met. It was kind of amazing. We were both from Ohio at the same time. We got uh, started going out. Not serving God, that's for sure at the time. But when we met, it was, it was a crazy time. But soon after that, you know, things began to change. And then we ended up moving back to Ohio together. We did start going to church uh, for about three years. And uh, it wasn't long after that. I was driving home one night and I heard Pastor and Drenda on the radio. Had no idea who they were. It was a radio show they were doing. And I caught the last five minutes of the show. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And I memorized the phone number and I ran into the house and I wrote it down. And uh, I actually called the next morning. It was, uh, it was amazing. They sent somebody over, gosh, the next day from their ministry and just started talking to Mike and I about what does the Bible say about money, what does the Bible say about marriage and life, and we were just, we were excited. We were excited. excited because the guy they sent over there, <laughs> he actually had answers when I was asking. Because at the time we had, yeah. we had only been married for, gosh, a year, yeah. a couple years, and we had already accumulated a lot of debt. And so these guys were talking about, you know, you don't have to do that, the Bible says there's an answer, da, da, da. And so I thought, oh, okay. So it was very timely. During that time, we started to attend the, the Pastor Gary's church and was pretty amazed. I was actually very amazed at the teaching because it was something that I never heard before, uh, that it actually appeared like there were real answers coming out of the Bible as opposed right. to do's and don'ts. And it was something that I could take home immediately and apply in my life. I started learning how to treat a woman properly, my wife. I learned how you know finances worked in the kingdom of God. I didn't even know that God was concerned about my finances. Throughout learning these things, we started tithing, mm -hmm. we started sowing, you know, giving above, giving offerings. We had no money. At the time, we were wanting to trust. We were wanting to, okay, take it to the next level. This is what pastor says. This is what the Bible says, not what pastor. This is what the word says. And so we just started trying it. So we'd heard a lot of teaching about, you know, what do you have? What can you, what kind of skills do you have that you can apply? 
and how can you use those skills to kind of advance yourself? Well, we also wanted a point of contact to release our faith with. And during the time we were going to the church and I was actually working in the parking lot duty, uh, helping park cars. And during that period, a family came, one of the cars that I parked, uh, it was actually an old rundown van. I mean, it was in bad shape. And during that period, Stacy and I actually had just bought a van. We had another one that we were getting ready to sell. And I just felt something, I felt compelled to give this van to this family. It was kind of new to me, this whole giving thing. And I told Stacy, I said, I really believe we're supposed to give this van. I'm not sure why, but I really think we should. So right. we decided, we came into agreement, we gave away this van. And during this time, Pastor was always teaching about, you know, what can you do? What, what do you have that you're capable of doing? What do you have that you can sew? Uh, where can you apply your hand? What kind of skills do you personally have? Right. So then during this period, we actually decided to get into shape. We were just, you know, Stacy had her third child. Uh, I was kind of, you know, slacking a little bit, you know, working out. And even though we had backgrounds at fitness, right. um, Stacy decided with me to do this contest. And because we had a background in this, it was pretty easy for us to jump right into it. So Stacy actually, we ended up uh, stretching a little bit and actually hired a personal trainer for her. She was diligent with her aspect of it. And over this period of 12 weeks of Stacy being consistently diligent and so on, I ended up winning my division and I won some great stuff and some prizes. But Stacy ended up being the grand prize winner of this entire thing. I won a 50th anniversary 2003 Corvette. It was incredible. Free and clear, pretty amazing. And it was due to the fact that we had taken what we already knew and we were able to apply it. And then on the way back, uh, actually after they gave us the car, we got real excited about this. Obviously we were jumping in up and down and hollering. And in the car, I looked at her, I said, this is how faith works. I mean, do you realize that we sewed a van, you were diligent with working out, you used what you had, and here we are driving away with a 50th anniversary Corvette free and clear, and it was all because we applied what we'd learned, sewn some seed, had a point of contact, and were able to apply that in our lives. And we realized this was Luke 6:38. Give, and it shall be given unto you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's the same measure. We gave a car away, and we got a car. After we won the Corvette, obviously it was a pretty big shock to us, but mo more importantly, it literally opened our eyes to the possibilities of what the kingdom principles had in store for us as a family. We actually, because we didn't need a Corvette with three little kids, we sold that Corvette. We used the money to actually pay off some debt that we'd accumulated, and uh, we got almost, uh, we got over $40,000 for that Corvette, free and clear. And that actually created a giving lifestyle, which is uh, something that you, we had never tapped into before, which was an incredible revelation. So we didn't, obviously, we, you don't stop there when you, you know, you finally find something that's working. And I always was trying to become more aware, and obviously I'd been going to the, uh, the church now for a few years, and I've been under this teaching. Um, Any time that I had the opportunity to sow into what I believe God was leading me to sow into, I did. We then had a business that started to really take off, and during this point, you know, we were real excited about what was going on and uh, the results we were getting. Uh, I felt really like led that God had put on my heart to sow above and beyond anything I'd ever thought of uh, sowing. And he put on my heart to start sowing $10,000 a month for 12 months uh, into Faith Life Now Ministries, which was really a stretch to say the least. And I finally told Stacy, I said, because I really needed confirmation. And I said, Stacy, I really believe God's telling us to give $10,000 a month to Pastor Gary's ministry, to Faith Life Now Ministry. I told her this when she was getting ready to go get out of the car to get groceries, I sat in the car. And she came back over to me uh, after she got groceries and she looked at me and she said, if you believe God told you that, then we should act on that. So we began to diligently sow that $10,000 every month. As a family, we took that check, we prayed over it, and we sowed that. And what was so incredible is that during that period, not only did we see increase of just some amazing things, but literally within a few years, we saw uh, our income just go into the seven figure mark of uh, some of the businesses that we were generating. I mean, uh, business ideas, public speaking engagements, I mean, all kinds of incredible things happen. So you can't tell me that sewing does not work. We were crying out. We were at the time. We were, we wanted our business to go to the next level. God knew, you know, okay, this is what you want. Let's, you know, let's, let's do this. And that's why he puts those ideas in our head. That's why he gives us that. So and we just have to be obedient to it. Right. We'd have to say yes. During this period, what was amazing is I would just sit there and pray or I'd be in church and all these, all of a sudden these different business ideas were coming up. Make this tool, go call this person, uh, do this. 
and it was just like boom, boom, boom. Different business things just popped up, right. and not and, and we didn't. I mean, it, it, at first it was a stretch to do this, but then soon after that it wasn't even any. It was nothing to do it, right. and that got my attention even bigger than the things I'd seen previously in our lives. Well, the one thing we learned is that uh, God doesn't want your money because he needs your money. That's right. He's wanting to get your harvest to you, but right. he has to have legal access to get that to you. So we have to do our part so that right. he can act on our behalf to do his part. Amen. Awesome. God's word works. It doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, people ask me, you know, my family, we are in really bad situation financially for nine years. And then got out of debt using these principles. And people say, well, pastor, could you tell me? If I sat down with you to mentor you, this would be the first principle I would tell you. This will change your life. I like what they said. You simply have to obey. Say yes. You're saying yes to God's word. What does God say about finances? You simply do what God says and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, I really can't afford to give. How many know that's the, the stronghold when you talk about generosity, which this series is about? I really can't afford to give. Well, is that really true? We've been talking about that. We're going to find out that's not really a good answer because God gives seed to the sower. As you begin to give, he's going to help you. This word came to me in prayer this week, extravagant giving. How many like to have a radical, extravagant lifestyle? Now, what comes to mind is the lifestyle of the rich and famous video TV show. You know, it's like, that's not what I'm talking about. Although God doesn't mind you having nice things. What I'm talking about is having a life of purpose, family, you know, contentment, uh, generosity, having all that you need. God wants you to have all that you need that you can be a blessing and walk your life out in success. That's very important to God because he's in the people business and your people, and he asked his people to touch people, amen? Amen. amen.